All right, so on example four, here we are. We're live. Uh, calculator permitted. Find the area, 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 means positive, 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 and like a good attitude, of the region between this graph, cubic polynomial, and this parabola that opens down. So once again, uh, the two functions have distinctive names, f and g, so we don't have to give them distinctive names. But there's only two curves, so they probably intersect to define their own region. All right, so step one. Put it into your calculator. F comes before G in the alphabet, so I will put F in Y1 and G in Y2. And so there they are. Zoom 6 gives you this graph right here. So if you notice, there are actually two different regions where uh, the, the curves are defined by their intersection points. You have this region here, which in that region from left to right, the blue is above the red. And then they intersect, and then you have this region here, and now in that region, the red is above the blue. So you might want to transcribe the pictures of what these look like to your um, paper, just so you can label things a little bit more easily. And so that's what I'm doing right now. And uh, they pass through the origin. Oops. Something like, something like this right here. So <clears throat> if you slice these with a vertical slice, it's going to work fine. But the regions are this one here, where blue is above red, and then this region here, where red is above blue. So you want to find all the regions that are defined by the two curves. And of course, why would it not be this region out here? Yeah, it, it, it's, it's between the two, but it's infinite, right? It's, it's unbounded, essentially. It goes on forever. So let's go ahead and help ourselves help ourselves. The blue one is F, and the red one is G. So you're going to have to come up with two different equations here, uh, because if you just integrate it straight across from left to right with either F minus G or G minus F, one of them will be positive, one will be, the, be negative. <clears throat> so a vertical slice works great, and a vertical slice um, has a thickness of DX. So there's your representative rectangle for each. We just need to figure out the points of intersection, right? So let's go ahead and go off to the side and do that. We want to show it. So f of x equals g of x, DOI. And since we have it on the calculator, that should be a pretty easy thing to do. So second trace, number five. Uh, I'm just going to type in a negative two here. Oops, that didn't work. Second trace, number five. First curve, enter. Second curve, enter. Either scroll or type in. So that one's at x equals negative 2. So I don't need to store that one. I think I can remember that one. The next one looks like it's 0. So I can guess 0, and it can confirm it. So that one's easy. And then the next one looks like it's 1. So you can confirm that however you want by finding it or typing into 1 to both of them. Oops, I didn't, I didn't get close enough. You have to get close enough to the other one, or it finds the same one again. Enter, enter. There we go. Uh, it does turn out to be a nice number. So in this case, we don't have to store anything as A, B, or C. They're all nice integer values. So now we just need to set up our integral. So let's call our integral area instead of A, because we tend to store things as A. So in the first region here, it's going to be the integral from where to where? Negative 2 to 0 of what? F minus G or G minus F? F minus G. Good. So the integral from, oops, negative 2 to 0, parentheses, F minus G dx. So if you ever have, again, more than one term in your integrand, you want to put parentheses around it. And then plus, we'll pick up at 0. This is the additive integral, interval property. And we'll cruise over to 2. And this time it's what? Yeah, or we call it G and F, right? So G minus F. And there is your integral setup. That would get uh, most of the points. And now it's just a matter of typing, typing it into the home screen, which is why we do it on the home screen. We don't have to compute these two things separately. We'll just evaluate them all at one time. So math 9, negative 2, 0. And let's see, F minus G, that's for me, uh, Y1 minus Y2 with respect to X. And then plus, another math 9, 
zero to two. And then G minus F is Y2 minus Y1. And of course, if we had stored values, we would be using A's and B's and C's instead of actual numbers. So a quick check, that looks good. And your answer should be what? Positive, yeah, 24. Yeah, really nice there. If you would do them separately and add them together, that would be more writing. And of course, they don't necessarily have to be integer values. So you would have the burden of like writing down three decimals plus three decimals and storing them. But it does turn out that both of those regions end up being 12 units apiece. So they're also equal in magnitude, even though they don't look like it the way I drew it. Okay, so there are some examples then. This one here needed vertical lines to define the region because they didn't intersect. These did intersect, they defined the regions. Here was one that we didn't know what the graphs looked like, so we used the calculator exclusively, but the graphs intersected to define the regions. And here's one where they defined two different regions. But all of those were vertical slice, which is what we're, we're typical, typically used to. <clears throat> all right, so example five and six are back to back. We're gonna kind of do the same problem, but we're gonna do it two different ways. All right, both without a calculator. So here we go, the first part, using vertical slices, that's our typical um, left to right Riemann sums. Find the area of the region in the first quadrant. So there's another indicator of where it's gonna live, bounded by these three equations. All right, step one, sketch the graph. Square root of x, know what it looks like. Y equals zero is the x-axis, and the line x minus two has a y-intercept of negative two and a slope of one. So it will intersect that other graph. Now we are in the first quadrant. So notice it didn't give you the line x equals zero. So it's not gonna be that entire piece. It's just gonna be like this little surfboard dorsal fin. Or I guess it would be a underneath fin, bottom fin. So that's what we want. <clears throat> now it says right here to use the vertical slicing method. So I guess we have to. <clears throat> so let's give these uh, different names. Let's call that Y1 and Y2. So we have Y1 there and we have Y2. So as I slice from left to right, there's my first vertical representative slice. Which curve is on top? The square root of X. Which curve is on bottom? The X axis, right? Is that gonna be consistent all the way through from left to right? No, because it's gonna be radical minus X axis up until you get to this point of intersection right here. And what happens there? The bottom curve now changes. The top curve stays the same, but the bottom curve now becomes y sub two, or x minus two. So this one is gonna require how many different equations for the height of my rectangles? It's two, right? Anytime one of the curves changes, you need a new equation. So in the previous example, they both interchanged. In this case, the top one stays the same. All right, so now we need to get our intervals of integration. I'm gonna start integrating at zero, and then I'm gonna integrate from zero to the, the x-intercept of that line, which is at what? Two, yeah, you could set it equal to zero if you want. You get x equals two. And now I need to integrate from two to where the radical and the line x minus two intersect, which for problems like this, you could do it by guess and check. You can eyeball it. It's probably going to be a relatively nice number if it's not a calculator. Anyone know what it is by looking? Take the square root of a number, take the same or subtract two. Yeah, it's four. But if you didn't know, let's come over here and do it. Square root of x equals x minus two. This one requires a little bit more work because to solve an equation like that, you'd have to square both sides, which is square multiply double square. But when you square both sides, you have to check for extraneous solutions. So now if you bring everything across, you get x squared minus 5x plus 4, and that should factor into x minus 4, x minus 1, and you get solutions of 4 and 1, but 1 ends up being extraneous. So there is a way to algebraically find it. But for a non-calculator question, it should be relatively easy, a nice integer. All right, so do we have everything we need then to set it up? I think so. Let's try it. Uh, what are we going to call our integral? Fred? Aaron. Area. That's better. So area equals. All right, from left to right, 
we're going to take the sum of the infinitely thin vertical slices from 0 to 2 of parentheses top minus bottom. Anytime you square both sides of a, an equation, you introduce the possibility of extraneous solutions because you're turning in a linear solution to a quadratic. And linears can have at most one solution, whereas quadratics can have two. And why was it extraneous? One doesn't really make sense in this context. One would be right around here, which is not where this line intersects the radical. Yeah. Okay, so uh, top minus bottom. I'm not going to put y1 minus 0 because I have to do it by hand. So I'm just going to put square root of x minus 0. Now, I know that the square root of x minus 0 is the square root of x, right? But do you think we want to show square root of x or square root of x minus 0? Yeah, square root of x minus 0. Again, you're communicating your method by doing that. And then plus, we'll pick up at 2 and cruise all the way to 4 of now parentheses top minus bottom is the square root of x minus what? Minus? Very good. Here's where you, for the first time now, you have to be careful. You don't just put x minus 2 like that, because now it's going to be R-O-N-G wrong. You either put parentheses around your x minus 2, or you distribute as you write it down, which saves a whole line of writing. But somehow you can fend with that, subtracting multiple terms. Dx. What if you left the last dx off? Would you lose points for your setup? No, because there's nothing after there that could be misleading. What if you left off the first dx? Would you lose points now? Now you would, because now that other integral seems like it's part of the original integral's integrand. So you have to be careful. So it, as a general habit, try to put it each time. You have shelves, and you have books on the shelves. You need a left book end, which is the integral, and a right book end, which is the dx. Otherwise, they fall off the shelf. That's just a mess. OK, so that would receive most of the points. Um, let's go ahead and evaluate it. Uh, the antiderivative of the square root of x is same as x to the 1 half, so it becomes x to the 3 halves with the 2 thirds from 0 to 2, plus the same thing here, 2 thirds x to the 3 halves, but this time minus 1 half x squared plus 2x from 2 to 4. Gross. So 2 thirds, I like to keep all my coefficients out, so I get 2 to the 3 halves minus 0 to the 3 halves, and over here, you can't leave the two-thirds out, so it becomes times four to the three-halves minus 16 halves is eight plus eight. That's plugging in the top. Oops. A lot of places this can go wrong still here at the end. Plugging in the top minus plugging in the bottom, which will be two-thirds, two to the three-halves minus two plus 4. Gosh, does that even come out to be anything nice? Let's see. 2 thirds, 2 to the 3 halves, is that anything special? That's the square root of 8. So you could call it 2 square root of 2. And then over here, 4 to the 3 halves, that's a little nicer because the square root of 4 is 2, 2 cubed is 8, so it becomes 16 thirds. And then these 8s cancel, gives you 0. And so now you have minus uh, 2 thirds. That's 2 to the 3 halves. So again, that's the square root of 8 or 2 square root of 2. And here's where you have to be careful when you're subtracting because now you've got to subtract those. Uh, 4 minus 2 is positive 2. When you distribute the negative, it becomes a minus 2. So even though it looked like it was ugly, what happens to these two gross terms? They cancel. And we're left with 16 thirds minus 2, which is the same as 10 thirds, which is a positive number. Sweet. So that's one way to do the problem. It works. But we had to split it up into two separate integrals, even though it was one region, simply because the bottom curve changed from one to the next. All right, so let's do this now. Copy this picture, copy it, and paste it down here on example six. Because we're going to do the exact same problem now, but now for the first time, maybe in your life, we're going to slice that puppy 
Not puppy, that's gross. Um, slice that region horizontally. No animals are going to be harmed. And we're going to see if uh, it's easier. We should get the same answer, right? You could slice it however you want. You should get all the same numbers when you add them all back together. So when you're considering whether or not to slice it horizontally or vertically, because you're ultimately going to have the decision, the main thing that you want to consider is, can I do it with a single integral, or do I have to split it up? When we slice it vertically, we have to split it up because the bottom curve changed. But if you slice it horizontally, here's what that would look like. It would look like something like that. Now there's a representative slice. But notice its thickness now is not dx, but rather dy. It's infinitely thin in the vertical. So if you're going to set up an area, here's the deal. You would have to take the sum from y equals low to y equals high. Instead of x equals left to x equals right, it's now from y equals low to y equals high of right minus left dy. That's your new template. Right minus left is going to give you the equation for the height of this as a function of y rather than x. So all of your variables have to be solved for x in terms of y. Now, it would be preferable to do a horizontal slice because notice as you slice it now from low to high, the curve on the right is always the line and the curve on the left is always the curve, right? So you could do it with a single equation. The curve on the right is always the same. The curve on the left is always the same. So that would be preferable. But there's ultimately one thing that may prevent you from doing that, and it's the equations themselves. Because you need to have everything in terms of y, you have to solve your equations for x. Can you solve your equations for x? Sometimes it's not easy to do. Uh, if y is equal to the square root of x, is that one easy to solve for x? Hang in there. Just since lunch. I broke it at lunch. Yeah, that'd be easy to solve for x. Square both sides, you get x equals y squared. So that's the new name of the curve. It's now x equals y squared. And y equals x minus 2. Is that one easy to solve for x? Yeah, x equals y plus 2. So that's the new curve on the right. Yay. If the equations did not allow you to solve for x, then you'd have to slice it vertically. And you would have to do it the way we did on example 5. Okay, so uh, now we need to get our intervals of integration. We're slicing from low to high now. So the bottom y value is what? y equals 0. And the top value is y equals that. Gosh, how can we find that? Yeah, you could set y plus 2 equal to y squared and solve for y. Or since we've already done the problem and we knew they intersected when x was 4, we could plug a 4 into either one of these for x and solve for y. 4 minus 2 is? The square root of 4 is 2, so it's at y equals 2. All right, so now everything is in terms of y. And the area is now going to be the sum of the infinitely thin horizontal slices from y equals 0 to y equals 2 of the curve on the right, which is what? y plus 2 minus the curve on the left, which is what? y squared, dy. Everything has to be in terms of y. So this looks like it's going to be a little bit easier to evaluate for a couple of reasons, right? First things first, it's just one integral instead of two. The next thing that makes it easier is there's no fractional exponents. This is Corpy. I certainly will. Uh-huh. KT, they want you to check out. Uh -huh. All right, let's see. If, if, if it works out, we should get what as an answer? Ten-thirds. Okay, fingers crossed. The antiderivative of y with respect to y is one-half y squared plus 2y minus one-third y cubed. Evaluate it from zero to two. All right, so here we go. We plug in the top. We get 2 squared is 4 times a half is 2, plus 2 times 2 is 4, 
minus plug in a 2, and you get 8 thirds. So there's plugging in the top minus, what do we get when we plug in the bottom? 0 plus 0 minus 0 is 0. Oh my gosh, this is like so easy, it's almost not even fun. So 6 minus 8 thirds is the same as 18 thirds minus 8 thirds, which comes out to be, not surprisingly, 10 thirds. All right, there you go. Example five, vertical slice. Example six, horizontal slice. We get the same answer. Which one was correct? Yes, yes both. Which one do you prefer? Yes. The correct answer to that opinion is example six, horizontal slice. That is the correct answer to that opinionated question. Oh, they sent this for her, and I didn't give it to her. Make them work harder to get them out of here. I remember I was in another problem. The guy handed me this. Yeah. Okay. Obviously, Kayla didn't want to leave, right? So, anyway. You remember the guy handed me that? I don't. I mean, I, yeah. After I didn't send him down, Rodney came in and handed me that, and I, I even said thank you, but. I was in the zone and not the auto zone. I was in the calculus zone. Okay. So <clears throat> horizontal slicing is now permitted. What is the ultimate criteria that helps you decide which one you want to use? Yeah, if there's multiple integrals or multiple setups that are required, you want to try and have fewer of those because there's just more to keep track of. But ultimately... You have to be able to solve your equations for y in terms of x to slice vertically, which is typically how they're given, but you have to be able to solve them for x in terms of y to slice it horizontally, and sometimes that's not possible. All right, example seven. Find the area of the region enclosed by the graphs of y equals x cubed and x equals y squared minus 2. What the? One solve for y and one solve for x. How am I supposed to identify the region? Carefully is the right answer. All right, so y equals x cubed. I think we all know what that guy looks like. He's uh, he's the disco graph, right? All right, let's call that y sub 1. Now, x equals, bless you, y squared minus 2. I think we have to solve that for y in order to see what the graph looks like compared to the other one. So y squared would equal x plus 2. And when you take the square root, you need to consider what? Both plus and minus. And now we've got it. It's a transformation of our radical dude function. What is adding two under the radical do? Move it two units to the left. Okay. So I'm just going to call this over here negative two. The positive version is going to look like this. And the negative version is going to be a reflection across the x-axis, which looks like that. That wasn't so bad. So now the region that's defined by the intersection is this little partridge in a pear tree looking thing or some kind of cool shape. All right, so now that we have the reason to identify, we have to decide how we want to slice it. If we slice it vertically from left to right, it's going to be purple minus purple up to this point of intersection, and then it'll be purple minus blue. So it required two setups, right? And the purple minus purple would be the positive radical minus the negative radical or twice the positive radical. So it could be done, but a horizontal slice, let's see if that's going to be any better. A horizontal slice would be something like that from low to high. The curve on the right will be the blue, and the curve on the left is going to be the purple. So that would require only one setup. So you want to go for it with horizontal? That's what I'm going to do. If you'd rather do two setups with the vertical, give it a shot. Yeah. Anywhere. I drew it down there. You could draw it right here. That's why we call it a representative slice. You could draw it up there. You could draw it here. Anywhere. <clears throat> it's kind of nice if you have like a rubber band and really white fingers. I can't really do that here. But if you hold the rubber band, you can kind of trace it from low to high. And the rubber band will be the, the, the rectangle at that point. My fingers kind of overly stretch here. Ah! But from low to high, it's blue minus purple. So anywhere you want to draw that. It's just something to consider. So I'm going to do that from low to high. So 
I need to figure out what this y value is, y equals low. I need to figure out what that y value is, y equals high. I also need to be able to solve both of my equations for what? X. Well, this one already is. That's going to be the purple one. So let's draw that. That's going to be on the left. X equals y squared minus 2. Let's go ahead and solve the other one real quick. It's the blue one. Can I solve it for X? Here's what's ultimately going to allow me or prevent me from doing it. Can I solve y equals x cubed for x? Yes, I can. It's the cube root of y. Go me. <clears throat> so now we actually <clears throat> have both of them solved for x, so now we need to find our uh, intersection points. So what can we do? Set them equal to each other. How are we going to do that? If I set the cube root of y equal to y squared minus 2, that's going to be very difficult to find. So guess how I have to find them? It says calculator permitted. Yeah. The only thing is, calculator didn't really help me in identifying the regions until I solved, <coughs> excuse me, the first one for y. So we're going to get cut off here. But uh, tomorrow what we'll do is we'll start up with this one again. And we'll sketch all of them in terms of y. And we'll see this region here. And we'll find the y values now instead of the x values. And we'll store those as a and b. Okay? We'll finish this section tomorrow pretty easily. I'm not going to make you all turn in the worksheet again, so just be practicing enough that you have it mastered. And we'll quiz over this on Wednesday. All right. Have a good rest of the day.